Come on. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. Right. Paul says, we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep, which are dead. Go ahead. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God. Here's that word trump of God again. Remember we read that in Ezra. We read that in Corinthians about the trump of God. Go ahead. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Those that died in this truth are going to rise first. They're going to be taken up before those that are still alive. That's what the Bible prophesies. Okay? So don't worry. Now, the word rapture, you will never find in the Holy Bible. It's not in here. What is rapture? Who knows what rapture means? Rapture, rapture. Churches all sing about it. Yes. It means to be taken up. Right, it means to be taken up. That's what it's referring to. But the word itself is not in the Bible. The meaning is here, but not the word itself. Read that again. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Mm -hmm. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds. In the clouds, meaning in the chariots. To meet, what you call UFOs. Go ahead. To meet the Lord in the air. To meet the Lord in the air. Go ahead. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore comfort one another with these words. Wherefore comfort one another with these words. Go to Matthew 24. So you got Christians arguing about some stupid thing called the seven year tribulation. Yes. Yeah, or is it mid tribulation? When does Christ come back? Is it pre tribulation? Mid tribulation? Listen, this is tribulation right now. Us being in slavery is tribulation. That's what the Bible's talking about. That's what we're going to Matthew 24. Matthew 24, I want to get to the point about Christ's return. Matthew 24, verse 29. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. Meaning wars amongst the nations. We read this earlier, but I just want to touch it again. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. Then shall, because this salvation is not for all nations. It's only for the tribes of Israel. Go ahead. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Come on. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet. There's that trumpet again. He's going to send his angels with the sound of a great trumpet. And they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. That's what the church is called the rapture. That's what they call the rapture. The Lord Christ sending forth the angels to gather his elect. Now, in case somebody gets stupid, because a Baptist or Catholic will say, well, all of us that believe in white man Jesus is the elect. Who's the elect? Levi, who's the elect? How do you know that? From Isaiah 45 and 4. Can we read that, y'all, stop? Isaiah 45 and 4. Y'all got to put this in your arsenal because a Christian, as despicable as they are, will try to twist scriptures, manipulate scriptures to include all races. Now, I can say that because I used to be one of them. So I know the tricks, the depths of Satan. <laughs> Isaiah chapter 45 and verse 4. For Jacob, my servant's sake, and Israel, mine elect. And Israel, mine elect. Israel, mine elect. Israel, mine elect. Right? I have even called thee by thy name. I have surnamed thee, though thou was though no, thou thou not, known. not known me. Let's go back to Matthew 24. Verse 31 again? Yeah. Matthew 24, verse 31. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. Stop, give me Psalms 50. Because you have some Israelite camps that don't believe 
in Christ's return. They said, no, we need airplanes. We got to go to other, we got to escape on a Boeing 747, a Delta, and go to another country. That's not the Bible prophecy. Psalm 50, verse 1. Verse 1. The mighty God, even the Lord, hath spoken and called the earth from the rising of the sun unto the going down thereof. Meaning from the east, that's the rising of the sun, even to the going down is the west. Go ahead. Out of Zion, the perfection of beauty, God hath shined. So Christ is out of Zion. Christ is the perfection of beauty. Go ahead. Our God shall come and shall not keep silence. He shall come and shall not keep silent. Go ahead. A fire shall devour before him. Didn't we read that in where, Kazakh? About fire? Azariah? Right, Isaiah 66, verse 15 and 16. All these precepts go together. Come on. Our God shall come and shall not keep silence. A fire shall devour before him, and it shall be very tempestuous round about him. You know what tempestuous mean? Meaning destructive. Go ahead. He shall call to the heavens from above and to the earth that he may judge his people. Gather my sins together unto me, those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. Now in case you didn't know, who made a covenant with God by sacrifice? Was it all nations? No. No, only the Israelites had a covenant with the Lord of animal sacrifice. Only the Israelites. So read that verse again. Gather my read, read four again. Verse four. He shall call to the heavens from above. What's that mean? He shall call to the heavens from above. What's that? Liam? Um, the heavens, when it's talking about the heavens from above, it's talking about the ruling nations. No. Give right back to Matthew 24. Y'all forgot the thought. Matthew 24 and 31. Matthew 24, 31. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet. And they shall gather together his elect from the four winds. From one end of heaven to the other. Read it again. And he shall send his angels with the great sound of a trumpet. And he shall send his angels. He shall send his angels. Go back to Psalms 50 and verse 4 again. He shall call to the heavens from above and to the earth that he may judge his people. Gather my saints together. Gather my saints together. Who is he saying that to? The angels. The angels. Christ, all the chariots is coming. He gives a what? Order. A order, a command. Gather my saints together. There's going to be destruction all around Israel. He gives the order. Gather my saints together unto me. Come on, read it again. Gather my saints together unto me. Those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. Meaning the Israelites. Gather them. That's also a message for the teachers. That's on the street teaching. If you're busy trying to gather anybody else, you're wasting your time. Okay, from there, let's go to Matthew 27. I forgot to, I wanted y'all to see Matthew 27 about the resurrection of the dead. Because remember we read, I'm going to backtrack. Remember we read about the dead in Christ shall rise first. Now you might think that's unusual, but that happened during the time of Christ when he walked the earth. Matthew 27, verse 50 to 53. So I'm just backtracking. So in your notes, when we read Thessalonians and Corinthians, I want you to put Matthew 27, 50 through 53. Matthew 27, verse 50, verse 50. Jesus, when he had cried again with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost. So Christ yielded up the ghost, meaning he gave up his spirit. He died on the cross, right? And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain. When it says the veil of the temple was rent, rent in twain, that was the time the old covenant was finished. Now the new covenant was being ushered in. Go ahead. And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain, from the top to the bottom. And the earth did quake, and the rocks rent. Rocks rent meaning rocks were split in half. Go ahead. And the graves were opened. And many bodies of the saints which slept arose and came out of the graves after his resurrection. So when Christ rose from the dead, it was so much power. The dead rose up right along with Christ. Amen. That's the power that rose in the spirit of the Lord. He got up, 
The tomb was open, bodies got up. There was too much power there. That's some glorious thing there. So don't worry, that's why he said, Paul told us, don't worry about the dead. What did Christ say about the dead? Anybody remember? Ramiah. Right. Keep find me that scripture. Find me that. Find me that. Find me that. It's somewhere in math. You know what that is? Mark 12, 27. Mark 12? Okay, thank you. Mark 12, 27. Thank you. I just want y'all to read that. Read 26 and 27. Now this is a precept to deal with those Egyptologists that ask you about the Egyptian book of the dead. Come on. Mark 12, 26. And as touching the dead, that they rise. Have ye not read in the book of Moses, how in the bush God spake unto him, saying, I am the God of Abraham, and the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. He is not the God of the dead, but the God of the living. Ye therefore do greatly err. So they didn't understand. So in the, in the bush, you got your hand, what does it mean? Explain it. This is also a good precept to show that. I want you to explain the scripture. Give him the mic. He, got it. he had his hand up. Read it again for him. And as touching the dead, that they rise. Have you not read in the book of Moses how in the bush God spake unto him, saying, I am the God of Abraham, and the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob? He is not the God of the dead, but the God of the living. He therefore do greatly err. Say that off. Go ahead. Go. Song, our forefathers are alive with us today. Right, letting you know that there's no death amongst Israel. What dies? This flesh. This is like your car. Your spirit is the real you. This body is a vehicle. When the vehicle breaks down, your spirit is still alive. That's why, because when Moses was dealing with the Lord in the bush, this was way after Abraham, way after Isaac, way after Jacob. But Christ said, he's the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. He's the God of the living, not the God of the dead. Now, let's go back to where we were at. We went Matthew 27. Did you finish that? You went down to 53? No. Come on. Verse something, verse 52. Matthew 27, verse 52. And the graves were opened, and many bodies of the saints which slept arose. He came out of the graves after his resurrection, and went into the holy city, and appeared unto many. You know how scary that must have been? Here you are, you buried your family some months back. Now you get a knock at the door. Who is it? It's your uncle. What? The, the uncle I buried a couple of months ago? Let me in, son, let me in. What the hell? That's some scary stuff there. But that's what happened. Okay, from there, let's go to Revelation 11. We read a scripture earlier about that there shall be a, a shout from the angel and the dead in Christ shall rise first, right? And the, years ago we had a book entitled The Bar and Eight. I just want to speak about this. I got that. And in that particular book, they show what the people look like coming up out of the graves. Now the reason why I mention that is because this book, and one of the places where it was printed at was in Israel. I tell you that in the book. It's, the, it's, it's, it's about the paintings all throughout Europe, all throughout uh, Russia, Romania, and the, in those different churches that are over there. They're painted all over the walls. Motivetti, they start they name them. Motivetti, uh, I can't remember the rest of them, but it was a lot of the churches. Anyway, I mention this because we, we brought up the point earlier about the so-called Jews trying to make the trying to say that Deuteronomy 20 is talking about them, yet the books that are sitting over there in the Israeli Knesset, the government of so-called Jews got paintings in the books of us, black, black people coming up out of the graves mm -hmm. in the books right. maybe I'll bring, that, I'll bring that book in one day Revelation 11 and 7 Revelation 11 and verse 7 and when they shall have finished their testimony. Now, when you read Revelation 11, you want to take notes on this. It talks about the two witnesses. Okay, one witness being Moses, one witness being Elijah. 
But it's not really talking about Moses or Elijah. Right. It's talking about the two kingdoms of Judah and Ephraim. That's the two witnesses Revelation 11 is speaking of. Read verse 7 again. When they shall have finished their testimony, the beast that ascended out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them. Make war against them. That's proof right there. Because make war against who? The two kingdoms of Israel. Like it says, give me that Daniel 7, 21, I think it is. Bear with me a second. I just want to give you all this precept. Now, in these classes, I throw out a few things to y'all. Those of you that are awake, you're going to catch it, you're going to take notes. Those of you that are asleep, you're going to be asking next month, what does it mean they made war? Because you ain't really paying attention. Daniel 7, verse 21. I beheld, and the same horn made war with the saints, and prevailed against them. Right, so that horn that made war with the saints was the... I'm Leon? Was who? He wasn't paying attention. Write this down. Oh, Isaac? Who is that? Right, America. Esau. Read it again, verse 21. I beheld, and the same horn made war with the saints and prevailed against them. Now go back to Revelation 11 and 7. Revelation 11 and verse 7. And when they shall have finished their testimony, the beast that ascended out of the bottom of the pit. Meaning, America came from where? No, America didn't come from Rome. Joel. Great right. That's the bottomless pit. Go ahead. And when they shall have finished their testimony, the beast that ascended out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them. See that? Make war against them is saying the same thing Daniel prophesied in chapter 7. Go ahead. And shall overcome them. Shall overcome them in slavery. And kill them. And kill us. They destroyed us as a people, as a nation. Read. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city. Stop. Now I'm going to see this thing, because we've gone over this many, 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 many times. And their dead bodies. What makes us dead? In the back against the wall on my left. Why are you saying it's spiritually dead? Proverbs 21 and 16. Very good. Y'all stop get that? Proverbs 21 and 16. Of Proverbs chapter 21 and verse 16. The man that wandereth out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. Right, that's the precept. Now, these are the, the Varna that Yalsop was talking about. That's a church that was built during the Dark Ages in Romania. There's one that shows the dead raising. Right. Go to the picture find it before that. Back up. Right. That's, That's it. it. That's the one. That's it. Look, look, look at them. Look at the angels. Look at the people look raising the people up from the dead. Out of the grave. Black. Varnet is V O R O N E T. Right, with the accent. Esau says that's Ted. And, and don't be confused by some of the pictures. They try to whitewash a lot of the art. You don't have to explain it. Look at the faces. Of the, look at the garment around their head as compared to the face. Right. And look at the angels. Look at the arms. Right. Look at the arms on this angel. Oh, okay. Some of the pictures, they paint the arms white like they went over it. <laughs> so these, this is still standing in Romania, Russia today. There's a lot of buildings, edifices, edifices that were built by our people during the Dark Ages and we painted our images, biblical references on the churches. We just got destroyed in these last days. We don't know what, which way is up. Hey, these people know the truth that these people were black. It's only over here in America where you're serving your captivity where the lie is being taught. That's the okay? point. Because we've had Europeans tell us, yeah, we know Christ is black. We got pictures, we got proof. That's the point that I'm making. Okay? I'm, I was telling you that this book, in the beginning of the book, they tell you where those, they tell you where the company that printed the book, it was printed in Israel. Give me that scripture in Thessalonians. Okay. So they know. So this, stay right there, Bezalel. Give me that one of Thessalonians 4 about the dead in Christ. So rise first. Okay, so what our forefathers did, 
They took the scriptures and painted them for us and left these things as records for us. You got it? Yep. First Thessalonians. No images. Huh? No images. Yeah, you got it. You're right. People talk about no images. Shut up. That's right. First Thessalonians, First Thessalonians 4 and 16. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God. With the trump of God. See the trumpet. Go ahead. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. So those are the Israelites that's being risen up. Yeah. Exactly. Gather my saints together unto me. There was another picture that showed you the saints and they all black and they had halos around their heads. Show me the the saints to the most high. Look at look 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 at those heads compared to those. Look at that. Look at Get the that saints. Top one up. Look at the black images of the saints. Look wait, go to Christ in the middle. Right there is Christ. Oh, look at that. This is this is this is the kind of stuff that your children need to see. Right. To get the lives of the demons out of their heads. Right. Can we go down? Because I got the book at home. Go down, down, down. Go up on me. There's Moses with the Ten Commandments. See him holding the tablet. The Afro. This guy right. Yeah, right there. It says it tells you in the book the prophet Moses. Right. Okay. Now go over to the far left. I want to show you something. Right there, oh. there's Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob on the far, the left three, holding the 12 tribes in there. Look at the you sons of look Jacob right Black! Look at, the look at the white robes that they're wearing and look at their heads sticking yeah, up out of the top of the robes. Right. There's John the Baptist holding that, that cross back there. Okay. Everybody has afros or woolly hair. You notice yeah. that? Yeah. So the, the history is out there. It's up to you to research and find it. So you so understand that we're at war. Now you understand that now. Now it's not. There's King David playing the, the, the harp, the lyre, I mean. Right there in the center. Can I make one point? Oh, yeah. They do have some people there that are red. If right. you go back up. Right, 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 right. Now, now, right. Now, right. Now, you read. You went You went there. Because that's exactly where I was going. Hey, just in case. Just in case you say, well, maybe they might have been white folks. No, they're going to show you what they mean by white folks. Now, because that right there was called the last judgment. Yep. That's the scene in the book. And it says sinners going to hell. And it got them, they got the sinners. The, the judgment, you see the, you see the scales of justice, the scales of justice, listen, listen, you see the scales of justice hanging over Esau's head? Wait, go up, you ain't getting there yet. Get the finger of God, black, holding the scale. Look at the hand of God. Look at the color of the hand of God, and look at the Edomite. Okay? Look! <laughs> now go over to, go to the right now. Yeah. <laughs> right here. Go ahead, down. down. Go ahead, down. See the Edomites in chains. In chains. That's it. And the women. Uh, and the women. They knew. I felt like they knew. They knew. That's the right way to They knew. Look at the women. Look at the women. That's right. <laughs> this, this art is hundreds of years old. That, that was painted in the 13 and the 14. Okay. And if you Israelites are dead dumb, the fall under a dumb Israelite that says it's a sin to have images, shame on you. Because yep. you'll never come to the understanding of what our forefathers left for us. So now you understand the reason for the Renaissance. They had to get rid of images like this, but there were so many of them. They didn't get to these places. Right. Okay, we have painted, the, uh, the uh, archaeology was painted all over Europe. Thousands of years. For thousands of years. For a thousand years, all that information was over there. All those paintings. You ain't seen nothing yet. Hey, you wait till you see the images within the catacombs. Hey, right. Y'all oh, got man. a book of art. The catacombs are hundreds of miles long. And they have... The images up there, the black artwork, and the names under them, who they are. So right. there's no confusion. Right. They just don't let Negroes in the catacombs. Mm -hmm. Okay? He has a book where they just let one, I forgot the name of the photographer, just get to certain areas and just take a few pictures. They didn't let them see the whole thing. So we don't know what's down there. Exactly. Who had the hand up? Now, right. say that, that, that's why they, they don't allow people to down there. Right, exactly. The government has that all locked down. Exactly. So the, the, our enemies know. 
Yeah. Yes, in the back. In my travels, I've I've seen those pictures. I've been to these places. Mm. I've seen them. Oh, praise I to the most high. Oh, you wow. took photos yourself? Yeah. Can you bring some in? Bring them in. Bring them in. So you have live witness accounts. All praises to the Most just High. Get, just get, so you can understand, these are our forefathers painting these things. Right. Now, back to Revelation 11 and 7 again. Revelation 11 and verse 7. And when they shall have finished their testimony, the beast that ascendeth out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them. So Esau made war against us. And shall overcome them. And kill them. Come on. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city. But like we prove, we're spiritually dead here. The great city is the United States of America. Read. Which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt. That's why now they pass laws. The president finally accepted gay marriage. This place is spiritually Sodom and Egypt because this is reminiscent of ancient Egypt, right? Where also our Lord was crucified. Right, the image of Christ was crucified here. They destroyed the black image. Go ahead. And they of the people and kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies. Meaning when it says, and they of the people and kindreds and tongues and nations, America is called the great melting pot. All nations are here. All kindreds are here. All peoples and tongues are here in America. Go ahead. Shall see their dead bodies three days and a half. Meaning 350 years. Go ahead. And shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in grave. Because we're spiritually dead, not physically dead. I hope y'all are taking notes. Y'all gonna read this tonight and go, I can't remember what the breakdown was. Come on. And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them. So Esau and all the nations rejoiced over us when they overcame us and put us in slavery and killed us. Go ahead. And make merry. Made merry. And shall send gifts one to another. We were the gifts on their birthdays. We were the gifts on their Christmases and New Year's Eves. We were the gifts they gave to one to another. Go ahead. Because these two prophets, meaning these two kingdoms, tormented them that dwelt on the earth. Come on. And after three days and then half, meaning after 350 years, the spirit of life from God entered into them. Entered into them. And they stood upon their feet. So what is the spirit of life from God? The spirit of life from God. Zakai. Right, where would you go? Where would you go to explain? Genesis 2 and 7. Genesis 2 and 7? Yeah, Genesis 2 person. Give me another one. That explains most in depth the spirit of life. Proverbs 72. That's that's good. Something else. I want another one. Well, you got your little notebook? Did you ever make a little notebook? Yeah. Did you see that? Did not or did I not ask all the brothers to get themselves a little notebook to help them? I mean, I have Especially y'all that go to camp. Uh, Josiah? John 6, 63. That's what we want. John 6, 63. But all those precepts they pulled was good. John 6, verse 63. It is the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profiteth nothing. Meaning sin profits nothing. The words that I speak unto you. The words. The words that I speak unto you. The words. The words. They are spirit. They are spirit. And they are life. And they are life. So that's what you want. Christ's words. Which goes back to the commandments. Go back now to Revelation 11. And verse 11. 11. Revelations 11, verse 11. And after three days and then half, the spirit of life from God entered into them. So the spirit of life is the words of Christ. The words of God, the commandments, entered into them. And they what? And they stood upon their feet. And they stood upon their feet. And great fear fell upon them which saw them. Now watch this. Come on. And they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, Come up hither. And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud and their enemies beheld them. So it's letting you know once again the rapture. When is it going to take place? When Israel stands upon their feet. There's time in there. Time. Because we read in Zechariah what? What he said. Who remembers? Joel, please. Lord shall raise the of Judah first. Right. He said, I'm going to raise Judah first. Then the rest is going to fall in line behind that. So read it again. And they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, 
come up hither. So from verse 11, notice verse 11. After three days and a half, 350 years, which was hard bonded slavery, the spirit of life from God entered into them, meaning the truth started to be put forth in the earth. They start waking up and stand upon their feet. Now after a certain dispensation of time, verse 12 again, and they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, come up hither, come up hither. That's the taking away, go ahead. And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud, and their enemies beheld them. Watch this, verse 13. And the same hour, meaning the same time of our deliverance, was there a great earthquake, and the tenth part of the city fell. And in the earthquake were slain of men 7,000, and the remnant were affrighted. So those that are alive, it says it's going to be affrighted, going to be terrified when this thing happened, come on. And gave glory to the God of heaven. And we're going to give glory to the God of heaven when we see the destruction as we are being delivered. Now, Hosea 1 and 10. That was that the slain of the Lord shall be many. Exactly. It's the book of Hosea, chapter 1 and verse 10. Yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea, which cannot be measured nor numbered. And it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, ye are not my people. What's the place, Phil? What is the place where it was said, ye are not my people? America. America, Babylon the Great. Phil, back up. How? How do they say we are not God's people? In the mic. One of the reasons why they said that we are not God's people. No, how? How do they say how? By giving him a false image. Nope. Steve. By calling us uh, Afro-Americans and uh, 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 Haitians and Jamaicans. Right. They changed our nationalities. That's how it's said we're not God's people. Because if they called us Judah or Benjamin and Levi from the time of slavery, we would always know what? Who we are. So back to our time. I mean, y'all saw yeah, that's that's yeah. I like that answer that Steve just gave because oftentimes when we ask that question, some of us may say, oh, they call us nigger, they call us spick, but they give the. We answer that way as if these Afro-American and, and Puerto Rican, like those names are okay. Those are not our names. Right. Anytime you hear those names, that's an insult. Anytime somebody called me an Afro-American, what the hell is that? There ain't no such thing as that. Right. A hyphenated nationality. You gotta be crazy. Yeah. You know, we're the Israelites. Right. And it, you uh, Hosea 1 and 10? Uh, Hosea chapter 1 and 10. Yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea. So we number as the sand of the sea. That's why Esau puts out their census every year to number us. They want to know how many we are. But we number the sand of the sea, go ahead. Which cannot be measured nor numbered. We can't be measured nor numbered, go ahead. And it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, ye are not my people, there it shall be said unto them, Ye are the sons of the living God. I'm going to see who's thinking. Read that bottom precept again. There it shall be said unto them, Ye are the sons of the living God. Who's saying that? Corey, who's saying that? Christ. No. Where is Christ on the earth teaching you that you're the sons of the living power, Corey? Is he here? Is he walking? No. You're giving it away. The most high is walking down here saying that? What the? What am I missing? What am I missing? Let me read it again. Let him read, 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 read it again. Listen now. And it shall come to pass in the place where it was said unto them, Ye are not my people. We established that when Steve answered. There it shall be said unto them, Ye are the sons of the living God. Alright, that's the brother that's gonna be that's the brother that's gonna be teaching on the street. Right, starting with Judah. Thank you. That's what I wanted. Which precepts to what? Uh, Zachariah. No. <laughs> Something else. Ramiah. Deuteronomy 33. Deuteronomy 33, remember? 
Bless Lord, the voice of Judah. Bring him unto his people. Remember that? Which precepts, what we just read, and goes back to Zechariah 12 and 7. All of things, this Bible is like a puzzle. You got to put the pieces of the puzzle together. This is the ultimate Rubik's Cube, for lack of better words. You got to put it together. Okay, y'all sup? Verse 11. Watch this. Then shall the children of Judah. Then shall the children of Judah. And the children of Israel. And the children of Israel. Remember, it was split into two kingdoms. Judah and Israel. Right? Be gathered together. Be gathered together. And appoint themselves one head. The one head is Christ. He's the king. And they shall come up out of the land. And they shall come up out of the land. They shall come up out of the land. Where did we just read that? Hi, Ma. Revelation 11 and 12. Revelation 11 and 12. Remember, it says we were caught up. It says we were caught up in a cloud and our enemies beheld us. First Thessalonians, the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive shall be caught up together with them in the air. Matthew 24 and Psalm 50, gather my saints together unto me. Read that again. And they shall come up out of the land. For great shall be the day of Jezreel. Great shall be the day of Jezreel, which is the seed of Israel. Psalms 91 now. So now, let me ask y'all a question. According to Revelation 11, according to Matthew 24, when our deliverance comes, what is going to be the state of the country? What is going to be going on here? Only four hands know. Oh, Corey, his hand is up. There's going to be war going on. Okay. Wait, where's the war going to be at? I'm off. Uh, the World War III is going to be in the Middle East. In the Middle East. Thank you. Very good. Psalms 91. But guess what? When I pop off, guess what's going to happen? They're going to start shooting stuff this way towards America. Read. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. What is the secret place of the Most High? Isaac. The Bible. Don't y'all know this is the greatest secret on earth? This is what, that's why they say that the Bible has always been the best seller. And you got scholars trying to break down what the book is about. This is the secret place that only the Israelites are abiding under. Come on. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler. A, a, what is a fowler? Abiel. A fowler is a person who catches a lot of birds. Right. A fowler is someone that catches birds, meaning they set traps for birds. Guess who the birds are that they're trying to set traps for? Us. That Israel. Surely he shall deli deliver thee from the snare of the fowler. Because remember Jeremiah 12 and 9 says, I will liken Israel, how does it go? I liken my heritage. I will liken my heritage unto a speckled bird. Okay. And from the noisome pestilence. The noisome pestilence is the destruction. He's going to break it down, going in with disease too. Biological and chemical warfare. Go ahead. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckle. Okay. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day. Notice the word arrow that flieth by day. Arrow is referring to what? Missiles. Missiles. The arrow that flieth by day. Go ahead. Nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness. Nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. Notice it says the destruction shall waste at noonday. So the Lord has given us all kind of clues in the Bible. That's why he says watch and pray. Go ahead. A thousand shall fall at thy side. Read this. Check this out, brothers and sisters. Slain of the Lord. The prophecy. This is the slain of the Lord in Isaiah 66. It says what? A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. That's what we read in Revelation 11. 
about the tenth part of the city, seven thousand shall die. Remember we read that? We are gonna be seeing death. Those that are alive in that day, you gonna see death all around you. But the Lord said, don't worry, I got you. That's when he commands the angels, gather my saints together. Ain't nothing gonna to touch those believers that are still alive in that moment. We are gonna be changed, what? In a moment, in a twinkling of an eye. And it says, our enemies shall behold us. Like it said in Revelation 11. Y'all forgot that already? Go ahead. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Right. Y'all see that from there? Matthew 24, 14. Matthew 24, verse 14. And, the gospel, and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world. For a witness unto all nations. And then shall the end come. And then shall the end come. So brothers, sisters, we are on a mission to get the gospel out, the good news to our people. Like we read in Hosea 1, 10, and 11. To wake our people up. And guess what? When it says this gospel shall be preached in all the world, it doesn't mean you're going down into Africa or China or to the remote regions. What does it mean? Who knows what it means? Bezalel. It's talking about the world of Israel. We're going to prove that. Revelation 7. We're going to read 1 through 4. Revelation 7 verse 1. And after these things I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth. The four corners of the earth. North, south, east, and west. Right? Holding the four winds of the earth. That the wind should not blow on the earth. Nor on the sea, nor on any tree. What are the angels holding back, Zakai? What are the angels holding back? Huh? The what? The armies. the armies. Where would you go to prove that? Second Ezra 13, verse 5. Second Ezra 13. Y'all stop, get that for us. Hold back the wind. So the angels are holding back the wind that it does not blow on any sea or any tree. What does that mean? It's the book of Second Ezra chapter 13 and verse 5. And after this I beheld, and lo, there was gathered together a multitude of men, out of number from the four winds of the heavens, to subdue the man that came out of the sea. So, that's the militaries of the world. The armies are coming from the four winds. So God in Revelation 7 is instructing the angels, hold back the winds. Hold back the armies of the world. Let's see why. And after these things I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. So common sense should tell you that that wind ain't talking about literal wind, because wind blows every day. So this wind is referring to the armies of the world coming from the four winds, from the north. From the south, from the east, and the west. To bring, to bring destruction. Go ahead. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels, to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea. See that? See the word hurt? <laughs> Those winds are bringing hurt, bringing destruction, which are the militaries, the armies of the world. Come on. Saying, hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, so we have sealed the servants of our gods in their foreheads. So what are we supposed to be sealed with? What is we supposed to be sealed with? Isaiah 8, 16. Let's go there. Write this down. Isaiah 8, 16 tells you what we are to be sealed with. Isaiah 8, 16. Bind up the testimony. Seal the law among my disciples. Seal the law among my disciples. That's the ceiling that we got to be sealed with. That's why in Hosea 1, it says, Then shall the children of Judah and Israel be gathered together. Why? Because they're going to be sealed with the law and the testimony. Okay? That's what we... Let me see who's thinking. Let me see who's thinking. Where did we read that in Revelation? Outside of verse chapter 7. We read that somewhere else. <clears throat> I'm off. Uh, 
Revelation 14 to 12. We didn't read Revelation 14. Did we read Revelation 14? Did we read that? Okay, yeah, that, you're right, you're right. Okay, that's good, that's good. I ain't gonna knock that. Give me another one. His answer's correct, it is correct. I want some new hands. Azariah. Revelation 11, when the spirit of life entered into it. Yeah, see that? That brother thinking right there. That's saying the same thing. When the spirit of life from God entered into them and we stood upon our feet. It's saying the same thing. Revelation 7 and 1 to 4 is saying. Read verse 3 again. Saying, hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees. So we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. So read it again. Saying, hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. So when is the destruction going to come? I'm going to see who can read. There's one word in that verse that tells you. Uh, a part. When Israel wakes up and is sealed with the laws in our minds. What's the word in that verse that tells you that? Sealed. Nope. That's not the word. Isaac. Nope. Never seen. Ezekiel. Ah, Steve. Till. 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 Read it again for him. Saying, hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the tree. Meaning, don't destroy nothing. Till. Till. Until. Until. We have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. See when the destruction is going to come? That's why we on a mission, brothers, to teach. Go back to Matthew 24. Matthew 24, verse 14. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. So do y'all see the correlation between Matthew 24 and Revelation 7? When the 144 are sealed, did we get that? No. That's verse 4. Oh, verse 4. We never read verse 4. No. I'm sorry, read that. Revelation 7 and verse 4. And I heard the number of them which were sealed. And there were sealed in 140 and 4,000 of all the tribes of the children of Israel. That's the world that the Lord is looking to wake up. The 144. Now in that you're going to have a great multitude, like it says in verse 9, of Israel. But the 144 are the leaders that God wants to be sealed. 12,000 of each tribe. We're not at that point yet. You look at all the camps. We're not at that point yet. That's why brothers, sisters, there's a lot of work that needs to be done. 